Hello everybody, welcome to Novella Farm. I'm Chad Turnbull. This is the second video in a series that I'm doing about our feed program. The first one was an overview. And this time I wanna dive in a little more specifically and talk to you about hay. So let's get into it. First off, let's talk about the basics. Hay needs to be readily available. It's the primary source of a goat's diet. It's important for rumen function, digestion, the way that uh, they take calories in throughout the course of the day. And so hay needs to be accessible. Uh, second, it needs to be dry. It needs to be stored dry, it needs to be put out in a way that it stays dry uh, for the goats to eat. And then third, it needs to be elevated. Goats don't like to eat hay off the ground. Uh, that creates a bit of hay waste, but we got to do what we can to try to accommodate uh, the way that they prefer to eat. And so um, for us, this little hay feeder has been the solution. We built this um, because we can move it around when hay waste kind of piles up a bit here on the ground. Um, we can then just move it. It's on skids. Uh, it's got a lid uh, that we use. We can open up so I can put the hay in. And over time, we've just figured out that some hay nets work best to hold the hay, uh, kind of slow the goats down in their process of eating. And so this is how we keep it out for them all the time, keep it dry uh, and keep it elevated so they can eat. Next up, I wanna tell you about the different kinds of hay that you can feed. And so let's go take a look at that. This seems like a good opportunity to remind you that I am not an animal nutritionist. I am simply a goat farmer who loves his goats uh, and has a few years experience feeding the goats. There are thousands of people that know more about hay and feed than I do. I encourage you to do your research, uh, but I wanted to give you a window into what we do, uh, tell you a little more about what we've learned in hopes that it helps you build a better feed program. There are basically two categories of hay, legume hay and grass hay. In the legume hay category, you'll find hays like peanut hay or alfalfa. In the grass hay category, you'll find hays like orchard, timothy, coastal hay, like this one. I should note this is coastal hay, not straw. It's brown because it's not a good uh, time in the season for coastal, but this um, is something our goats will enjoy. And then you'll also find blends like this hay here, which is an orchard alfalfa blend, a mix. It isn't that one hay is better than the other. They each have unique properties. They have different nutritional contents. And so really it's how you use the hay in your feed program that makes a big difference. We feed coastal hay as the foundation of our program. All of our goats get access to free choice coastal year round. And from there, we then supplement with something like alfalfa or an orchard alfalfa mix which is what you see these guys eating over my shoulder. They get the free choice coastal and then uh, in the morning or a couple times throughout the day, we'll put out this other uh, legume hay. And we found that the alfalfa really increases milk production. And there's a reason for that. Alfalfa has just uh, about 21% protein and 11% simple starches whereas grass hay has just under 11% protein and closer to 13% simple starches. So the increase in protein, the reduction in the simple starches, among other things, leads to a higher output in milk production. We don't feed legume hay, alfalfa or peanut hay or the blends to our bucks because you have to keep calcium and phosphorus in the right ratio. If calcium gets too out of balance, you run the risk of introducing urinary calcii, uh, stones, urinary stones in, in bucks. And it can cause a urinary blockage, uh, it's bad. And we have found that our goats do just fine on coastal hay and grain. And so we don't run the risk of the urinary calcii by offering a higher calcium feed. A couple final remarks on hay. 
One, it's helpful to know your supplier, whether that be a hay guy or the feed store. Uh, it allows you to be able to do some research into the nutritional content of the hay. It also helps you avoid uh, pitfalls. You know, for example, blister beetles are common in alfalfa hay in warm weather climates. And so knowing your supplier allows you to know the good stuff uh, and what you're dealing with, as well as avoid bad stuff. Uh, so make sure you know your supplier, you're familiar with your supplier, uh, and you're able to do some research into what hay they're providing. And second, something we found really helpful is to make change changes slowly, uh, take your time, because that gives your animals time to respond. It allows you to literally measure the differences that the change in hay or change in feed uh, is creating. And it gives your animals time to adjust uh, to the new feed. That's it. That's all I've got on hay. Hopefully that was helpful to you. As always, send us questions. Give us your insight that you're finding. We'd love to hear from you. And I'll see you next time.